Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Hazel Lucia Tarot. I am Stephanie, your tarot reader, and today's reading is about whether you and your person should be friends or whether you can ever be friends again. So we're going to look at the relationship, whether it's platonic, friendship, familial, or whatever the case may be, between you and another person to see if uh, you can remain friends. I feel like for a lot of you, it might be an ex, it could be a situationship person, it could even be uh, for some of you friends that you are no longer friends with, like former friends that you want to either continue some sort of friendship or maybe even rekindle a friendship. We're looking to see if you can be on good terms, essentially. We have three piles here for you today. Pile one, we have candle quartz. Pile two, we have this uh, uh, garnerite. And pile three, we have a raw emerald. So take a few deep breaths, tap into your heart space, bring in the light into the um, into the heart, into the head, and into the mind, and I'll be ready for your reading whenever you are. Hello there, Pile One. If you chose the candle quartz, I'm going to tap into your reading to see whether you and your person can be friends or remain friends, depending on the situation here. We're going to look at these cards. These are going to be your connecting cards, and then we're going to look at you individually to see where you, um, where you lie within this connection. So we have 33 reasoned. Anytime I see this card, I think of a Black Panther because of the color, like this deep bluish purple, but also it's got this helmet. A uh, number 33 could be important. You or your person could be a life path 33. I want to say it's more you, pile one. I do feel that you would be more into master numbers or numerology in general. 33 is a master number of healing, of teaching, of guiding people through a spiritual path. Um, that's my number actually, but I also see that there's a lot of reason within this particular connection Like you're both handling it as maturely as you can We also have the good kind And set your intentions with number 30 So far so good. Let's go ahead and get the cards for you individually I'm intending for you to be this uh, area person a and your person to be person b but if you see any um if you want to switch them around you can or if you see any particular aspects of each other here um you could either be mirroring each other or you could just it could be something that you see within each other that is actually a reflection of you so for your section we have your animal card is turkey spirit give with gratitude and grace you're a very giving person pile one you could even say forgiving but i'm seeing somebody who is very generous but also very forgiving and then your person for them we have giraffe spirit see the big picture your person is a big picture kind of a person and where they don't just look at like the small things they see everything that has passed between the both of you it's like if you got into a dispute or a spat over one small particular thing or even if it wasn't small it could have just been like one very big argument I feel like they wouldn't take that to heart they would look at the grand scheme of things like everything that you've done for them or that they've done for you they would take everything into consideration meanwhile you're very generous so I can see why you're both very reasonable here it says reasoned but i'm taking this card as reasonable i can tell that you're both very um you know where you come from these are two secure people who understand what they are what they're made of and where they lack very self-aware as well um that's why we have the good kind here um let me go ahead and get a the prism card for either side for you we have fear and for your person we have protection there's some dark energy going around here and i don't even think it's either of you i think this is something that is outside of your control or something that is um oh back of the deck anger yeah there's some dispute or argument here and whatever this was it wasn't even either neither of you was at fault it was some outside source or some outside um situation that brought this about but I feel like you you both came to a disagreement because of this regardless, maybe because of how you handled it. I can see the both of you handling this thing very differently. But I can also see that there is a... Just how you handled the situation is the biggest thing here. But there's been... There's been... Where this anger comes from, I'm trying to figure out. Because I don't think the anger is even at each other. Or if it is, because I can't see either of you being angry at each other. There's a like a misplaced anger, like you want to take it out on them because maybe they're the one who did something, 
but that's not even where where it's supposed to go you know i feel like the anger is either it could be at yourself it could be at like your own selves i'm talking about both of you individually like you could be angry at yourselves for how you handled something but it also couldn't be left unsaid that you each mishandled this particular situation i'm gonna get one more card for either side um I'm using the destiny card just to see where you're both headed within this connection if headed in a similar uh, direction for you we have diligence i feel like this is just going to make you smarter but i'm also noting that this particular bird is flying this way you could be the one who wants distance from this connection but you're still wondering if like in the future there'll be anything uh, for the both of you especially if you have to work together in some regard um, I'm not seeing strong romantic vibes here but that could be the case um, it could be a baby mama baby daddy situation you could have kids together and this could be part of the reason why you're having to think very diligently about this and then for your person patience um, person B has a lot of patience they see the big picture um, with protection I could see them as being very protected but I'm also seeing that they want to protect some aspect of this connection or even you. And you'll know, who, you'll know who this is because this person will be the first one to ask about your safety, to ask if you're okay, even if you're not speaking to each other. This person will be somebody who, if they hear that anything bad has happened to you, they'll want to hear about it from you firsthand. Even if you're not friends, I feel like this person just has genuine concern about what is going on with you and your life because this person... Like I said, they see the big picture and the big picture could be taken in multiple ways. It could be seen as their own reputation. It could be seen as how the family would think of them. It could also be seen as just the overall well-being of you and how you are operating within a specific uh, environment or system or a group of people. This person has genuine concern. This feels a lot like a family member who feels like they have to watch out for you. Um, it doesn't have to be the case, of course, but this is the kind of energy that person A, sorry, that person B is giving me with all the patience, big picture, and protection. Person A, though, if you are resonating with person A, um, very, very giving and forgiving. With Grace, I feel like Person A always tries to do the good thing, not just out of love and or respect, but just that's just the person they are. Person A does the right thing because they care about their morals. They care about doing the right thing. Person A definitely understands that there's a lot of awful stuff in the world and they don't want to contribute to being part of that awful stuff, you know? But at the same time, there is also an ego here and where they have to look out for themselves. It could be that people have taken advantage of them in the past because it's easy to take advantage of somebody who is very giving somebody who has a lot of abundance and i feel like person a even expresses this or has a hard time hiding that they have a lot of abundance that's just the way they carry themselves and this is part of the reason that people take advantage and what this has caused within person a especially within the heart because i feel it very deeply between the heart and the solar plexus energetically um it's this fear and fear is usually a root chakra thing but here it's like the seeds of fear have been planted within their heart so they have a hard time trusting person b i really feel like it's person a here that is the one who caused this rift because they just there, there's a sense of disappointment and or betrayal on their part from whatever it was that person b was trying to accomplish or do and i feel like it's just it it's kind of overtaken them. I see them as the one who had to retreat and go away. Meanwhile, person B wanted to somehow still keep things intact. But what person B doesn't seem to understand from person A is that person A has been through a lot. There's a high number on this particular card, 61. And I'm taking that to mean not age, though I guess that could be the case. But I'm taking that to mean that they have a lot of life experience. Like they have the wisdom of somebody who is 61 regardless of their actual age. Or they have that wariness where they just know what's about to happen. I feel like person A is very psychic, very intuitive. But some people can take this um, and run with it in the wrong direction, you know? Sometimes when we're psychic, we see the worst things that could happen. And we allow that fear to overtake us. As opposed to working with that future vision that we see to create better things. And I feel like person A was on that path for some time. Or they still are. I feel like they still very much are. But whatever this particular thing was, because they were so close with person B, um, they they let their emotions get the better of them. 
And unfortunately, one of those emotions was fear. One of those emotions was a betrayal. So I can see that person A was probably more in their emotional space than person B. Not, say, not saying that person B wasn't also emotional. It's just that person B, they have a, a different perspective. They were looking at bigger things. They were looking on the outside and not the inside. They could have mishandled the emotions, thoughts, or even fears of person A and therefore had a hard time like understanding where they came from. Because even when I think of these two animals, I mean, there's a lot of birds here letting me know that they're similar animals. They're, sorry, similar kinds of people. They're both birds, but a crane like this one is different from whatever bird this is. This bird is a lot smaller. And even their, even the backgrounds, one is like this gorgeous either sun or moon and the mountains faintly in the background. And this one is like a farm field. So it's like even their gazes were different. Person A is closer to the ground because they're a turkey and turkeys are flightless birds. Meanwhile, giraffes aren't birds, but they have like very high perspectives because, you know, they're very tall animals. So it's almost like they complement each other and that they're able to see the things that the other can't. But the problem here was that specific thing that the other person can't see was the, the same thing that brought them apart. Like they were looking at something and though they appreciate the difference in perspective, they appreciate that they each think in their own way. It was that same thing that brought them apart because they couldn't see what the other person was seeing. They couldn't see that. And that's part of where this disagreement comes from. So there's anger here. And I can tell that the anger is still very persistent and present. And this is probably part of the reason why you're here, pile one, regardless of who you identify as, because you see that that maybe you're having a hard time releasing the anger with set your intentions especially if you do energy work or shadow work if you do want this connection to continue being a friendship you have to set that intention i'm also hearing set the boundaries set the boundaries set the intentions of how you want this connection to progress because i feel like it's mostly in your hands i feel like person b is very receptive and open to the idea of continuing this friendship even though they have been hurt, I feel like they are also just as forgiving or they understand now at least where person A is coming from. But person A is also very forgiving. I feel like they're both equally forgiving. It's just this hurt was so personal. I think because of their connection, because of how they work well together and even understand each other uh, for the most part, except with this particular conflict, of course. With reasoned, I can tell that you're both very intelligent individuals and the good kind lets me know whatever this connection was, what regardless of whether it was platonic, friendship, romantic, familial, it was the good kind. This was a good connection, it still is. And I can tell that people want to see you back together or want to see this friendship again, but there have to be precautions proceeding with this friendship like going forward and I think it has it'll depend on whether you can both see eye to eye with those uh with this particular conversation that you may have to have so yes you can be friends um but what's underneath this we have yeah what did I say caution precaution it was upside down I don't think this is meant to be taken upside down but you have to set that caution that going forward should a similar situation arise you cannot handle it the way you did here you have to come from a place of understanding and the communication has to be Far more open than it was because I can tell I'm coming out of we're coming out of a mercury retrograde as I am filming this and this particular one was the craziest one I've seen in a while and I maybe this is that same retrograde that you guys are have had this dispute but you just have to understand that sometimes things are out of your control um and you have to really communicate effectively like be as clear as possible like don't be afraid to double triple quadruple check everything with each other going forward um i am getting an outside energy that was intervening i'm not sure if it was another person or if it was just like i said a retrograde of some sort like literally just some sort of it's a dark energy like something that was shrouding your mind um that was like clouding somebody's vision here or somebody who could have been distracted. If there was a third party involved, um, I feel like this person really uh, distracted one person or another. And one person could see it, but the other one couldn't. And this is part of what made this uh, made this whole... It could have been over this person, honestly. And whether this person is still in your lives or not, I think that's irrelevant. You just have to understand. If this person is going to continue being within your lives... Um, Oh, wow. Okay. So if this person is going to continue being within your lives, if there is a third party situation, then the, the answer is no. If it's like, 
If this is an ex and you are on friendship terms and they have like a new person, you can't be friends with this person while this person, while your ex is still with this person because that person is going to, there's mind games here. There's mind games here on, on somebody's behalf. I don't, I don't know who it is or what's going on. Um, so if there's a third person involved, if it's a business thing as well, if you're going to be continue doing business with this third party within this business relationship, it's a no. You either have to get rid of that person or just do this particular situation on your own, um, not as a joint uh, partnership within the business. And if it's a friend, um, but if it's a friend, they just have to make sure they set the boundary of what is right and wrong is what I'm hearing. Because if it's another platonic friend, um, then yes, you can be friends. You just have to not hang out with that same friend, you know, or you got to make sure that friend is not too much of an influence to the point that they'll change your friend here is what I'm hearing. Chris, that's not going to be everybody, but if there's a third party involved, there's something here about that third party's intentions not being great, unfortunately. But let's go ahead and move on to the tarot portion because it seems like so far so good. Like, yes, there, this is salvageable. But I kind of want to see, because the problem here would be either this third party energy or situation or person, or it could be somebody's wounds not being completely healed as well. And I was avoiding that particular subject because I don't think it's something that can't be healed. I can tell, um, I think it's going to be mostly person A with the fears that need to be healed. And I feel like those problems are something they would already work on or they are aware that they're a problem and they would want to continue uh, improving that situation. But if there's going to be another person getting involved and like, you know, stirring the pot, causing, causing mayhem and saying things they shouldn't say, it's going to make it that much harder and that might be too much to take on in that modality of healing. All right, so we're going to do this similar. We're going to get some connecting cards and then see where you both are. And then we're going to do some concluding cards with a different deck. All right, so connecting energies for my pile one. Can, can they be friends? We have the king of coins. This is a long-term connection regardless of what's going on. If you do try and separate, there will be things that keep you bringing each other back to each other. I feel like you just had a lot of business with each other or like a long history. If you have children together, of course, this would be what keeps you together. Because the pentacles here is a binding agent, a long-lasting binding agent. You could have a contract together as well of some sort. We also have temperance. But it was reversed, and I don't typically take reversals. Something is off balance here, and it needs to be balanced. Something is off balance within this connection. That's another thing that is coming through. And I don't think that has anything to do with the third party or energy. It has to do more with somebody here taking on more than they should, or somebody here uh, taking more than they should. Somebody here is a giver and a receiver. Whoever the taker is, they take more than they should. Um, we have the Five of Swords, Win Some, Lose Some. Letting me know that yes, going forward, you, if you are friends, it'll be fine, but you'll always look back at this particular situation and it may color the way you see your friend going forward. It may color the way you see them going forward. Like you do not see them the way you used to pile one or they may not see you the way they used to because of something that was said or done. So now you look out for it. So let's say if this is a business partnership, you saw your partner mishandle this particular um, situation and now you know not to let them do that. Or now you know that if you give them that opportunity again, there's a high chance that they will fall into that. So there's a bit of mistrust here with the Five of Swords. Now let's look at you individually again. So person A, Turkey Spirit. Um, we have, okay, we have three cards. We have the Queen of Wands. We have the Four of Coins. Person A is holding on a little bit more than person B is what I'm seeing. And the reason is, oh, the lovers. Because person A understood that this was a good connection. Person A understands this connection allowed them to really come out of their shell. With the Queen of Wands, even if person A is not typically very outgoing or charismatic, this connection really brought that out within them. It brought out something very confident and very self-assured that 
maybe nobody else has done for them or maybe they can't really act this way around a lot of people it brought out something within them the lovers doesn't necessarily have to mean romantic connection though i feel like for some of you it will be um it can also mean a partnership that was just meant to be whether it's a business partnership a friendship one where you both complement each other because you you fill in each other's gaps where like Whatever one person lacks, the other person makes up for it. It's a very balanced connection, or at least it used to be. Like, as a as a duo, it's balanced. But the things that go on between this particular friendship or connection are not always balanced. Like, together, you make a great pair because it just seems that you fit for each other. It makes sense. But the dealings that go on between this connection are not always in balance. That's the problem. So yes, people may want to see you two together because it seems that you're made for each other. But the way the both of you go about this, it's just not what everyone would think it is. So let's get some cards for person B. We have the moon. So person B is the one with secrets or hiding something. Person B has not been completely honest with the moon. It's something to do with their subconscious. They may not even be aware that they're doing this. Um, there's some kind of childhood trauma that has made them need to keep secrets or not be fully honest. They could have had parents that were either very strict or maybe not strict enough. I feel like there's an imbalance here of their own um, personality. We have the Seeker of Wands. And I want to say the Seeker in this deck is the Page of Wands. There's an immaturity to person B. There's an immaturity here. Um, and the page of wands to me is a child, um, but it could also be, like I said, childhood wounds that are preventing them from acting like an adult, because I really do feel that like they're an adult. And judgment. They're the one who made the decision that was the impactful thing here. It was something that they did that prevented this connection from staying as a friendship. Um, because... Whether they take ownership of that or not, because I feel like person B wouldn't with the page of wands and the moon. Um, they're the one who made the decision. But it also seems like they're the one who doesn't understand why person A had to fall away or had to back off. Or if the case was... I feel like person B doesn't understand that the choices that they make have an effect on everybody. Or even if... You know what? I feel like person B doesn't even understand that they've made choices. This could be somebody who deflects and makes it seem like it was somebody else that made them do something. So I feel like person B has to really own up to the fact that um, ooh, words have been in <laughs> words have been exchanged in this connection with the Page of Swords. the The communication is not great right now, but um, it's almost like person B refuses to take accountability for themselves when it comes to the decisions they make because the decisions they make are very impactful to person A or at the very least within this connection. And this is the off balance here because person A, I feel, is very willing to work with this and there might be some aspect of them that has a hard time letting go, yes, but they're willing to work on themselves. After all, temperance came out more on their side than this side. And then person B, it's weird. Like I said, they have very different perspectives and it's those same perspectives that push them apart. Like, it's like if you were complete opposites and you're drawn to each other because you're opposites, but it's also that opposition that like repels you because it's like, how dare you see that that way? Um, it's going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky to navigate this one because I can tell that they're both not willing to let go of some aspect of themselves. But because we have two major arcana cards, in person B side, I feel like their decisions or their words or their actions have been the most impactful upon this connection and they're going to have to be the ones who do the most work. Person A also has work to do, but I feel like it's mostly internal because I'm taking the minor arcana cards here to reflect internal work that they have to do. And like I said, I feel like person A is self-aware enough to understand this. I feel like they want to be this queen of wands person without person B. They're trying or they know that they can come that they can activate that within themselves. They don't want to be the person. It's like they understood that they had to meet person B to be that queen of wands energy. So they don't want to have to rely on person B to be that. They're going to find that within themselves to be that. And then person B will have to eventually come around to the truth, whether that's healing themselves or allowing just being more thoughtful about the decisions that they make. And I'm not taking sides here. I'm not saying one person is better than the other. I feel like they both messed up in their own ways. It's just there's an off balance. The king of coins lets me know this is going to go on for some time. 
Um, this connection, it's, it's hard to get out of because there were a lot of very important decisions made here. Probably more on person B's side than person A's. But person A also played a role in this, mostly in the way this connection went along. Um, I feel like person A called the shots within the connection, within the friendship. The, especially if it was romantic, person A was the one who called all the shots within the romance. Um, but if it was friendship, I feel like person A would have been the one to reach out the most or make the decisions. Um, both have very strong fire energy within them. But that's the thing about fire energy. They all get along so well, but they're also... All fire signs have like a very strong ego, like they all have their pride. Um, so there, there's like a, a love and hate here. But I'm feeling, let me go ahead and clarify this with another tarot deck, which I'm not prepared because I don't have another tarot deck with me. All right, we're going to use the Wild Unknown Tarot. And we're going to get three cards. So what else do we have to know about this connection, about them being friends? We have, so there's a lot of nights where I feel like the both of you have thought this through and through and there's anxieties on both parts. Like you both think about each other and it's not always in good ways. Like you're worried about where this connection is headed. Should it head anywhere? We also have the hangman. Somebody's going to come around and apologize. Whoever this is, I'm not sure because I feel like, again, they both have big egos. Person A is very forgiving, but person B is very concerned about person A. Um, and then last card we have, okay, we got two. We have three of wands and judgment again. Somebody here is planning on making another uh, decision. The fact that judgment was next to judgment, it might be person B. It'll be all up to person B and whatever they do. Like I said earlier, if there's a third person involved... It might be person B who has this person because um, you can read the nine of wands as like a third party. I usually see that more as the nine of, sorry, the three of cups, but because it's the wands, it's let, it's letting me know that this is somebody who sees somebody else as competition. Like if it's a friend, they're jealous that they're, that they are friends with this person. If it's a, if it's an ex, it's a new partner um, who of course would be jealous of the ex in some way, shape or form. And if it's a business partnership, um, the third party is... If it's a business partnership, this third party wants to get more, a bigger cut out of this whole situation. Like they want more money or they want more business within this connection, within, sorry, within this business. So it will be, it will be somebody you have to watch out for because they want a little bit, they want a bigger cut of the cake is what I keep hearing. They want more. And back of the deck energy, two of cups, letting me know, yeah, there's... There's potential for this to be friends again, but you have to have a, a very grown-up talk. How can I put this? Because right now, the talks that you are having are not enough or they're not... I feel like it would be short conversations that you're having. Like, you could just be texting and texting is not a conversation, unfortunately. It's something that has to be eye-to-eye, -eye, literally, like, face-to-face. Because -face. underneath that, we have the Ten of Coins. This is going to go on for some time, whether you like it or not, because there's there's just a lot, a lot of history, a lot going on, and a lot at stake for some of you. We have to move on to the advice, though. Because within the advice, I'm going to get... Um, I'm going to use the, the Illuminator's Amulet. It's a yes-no deck. Just for a little bit more blunt answer. So I'm going to pick two. One is going to be for the... can. Can my pile one and their person be friends? And the second one will be, it could either clarify this or it could be, um, if you have any other question in your mind, go ahead and ask it now. So for my pile one, that one wanted to pop out. Um, and then the second question, can they, oh, okay, this one. So first question, it's a hard no on this. And second question, take it to the altar. <laughs> What did I say? It So when I read this card, take it to the altar, it makes me think of several things. One, if you have an altar, that's just, just an indication to work with that altar to um, bring about good things within this connection, even if it's just your person, regardless of whether you want to talk to them or not. Two, um, I'm thinking of an altar like at a wedding. So there's a possibility that this already feels like a marriage or a divorce. Regardless, you are already bound to each other in some way. I did say earlier that you could have... Uh, there's a contract that has been signed between the both of you, even if it's just a, a spiritual contract. And three, um, 
It could be a yes if you want this to be long term because there is a potential for this to be long term. So yes, you can be friends with it's a hard no on this. What I was seeing is that this is whoever, whoever this third party is, if there is one, I know not everybody may have one, but this third party is a problem. That's going to be the biggest problem. So it all depends if you, if this is an ex and they really want to commit to this new person that they have, you're just going to have to move on. There's no need to be a friend there. If it's a friend, like I said, just be wary of that friend. Make sure you say no to that particular friend. And maybe distance yourself until something comes to the light. Because there's something that's going to come to the light here if it's a friendship connection. And if it's a business partnership, just be wary. Like, get everything in writing. Nothing under the table. Like, this third party within a business, it's very shady. I would not trust it if it's a business. Because when it comes to money, it's a hard no. We're going to get a card from the Affirmators Love and Relationships. But yeah. Oh, and if you have an altar and there is a third party, um, make sure to dispel any energy they are trying to send to you. Yeah, because there's something there's something not great about that energy. It's usurping, if that makes any sense. Or or they could be trying to fill a role that you were filling. It's definitely competition. All right. So we have these two cards. Commitment. I willingly accept that it's safe to topple my walls and commit completely to a relationship. It might be one that's already here or one that's on the way. Either way, those walls have got to go. Without them, I can go further, feel freer, and love bigger than ever before. Bonus in the wall means I save a lot of money on picture frames. If you have pictures of this person, um, I'm hearing either get rid of them if you don't want them in your life or update the picture to something more current. This is something in feng shui. If you have pictures all over a certain house or a place from a very long time ago, it's time to update them to something more current um, because that can keep you stuck in an energy of the past. Um, that's just a feng shui tip. I try to do this every few years and especially in your parents' home. If you feel that your parents still see you as like a child, it's because they have way too many pictures of you as a child. Put a new picture up of you in your current age. Um, I don't know who needed to hear that. That's kind of a side note. We have levity. Laughter is the best legal medicine, and it looks like it's time for you to take a sweet, sweet hit of it. When someone annoys you or a plan goes awry, try finding something funny in here. And if you ever feel like the butt of a joke, remember that the only difference between someone laughing at you and someone laughing with you is that in the first version, you're not laughing. You always have the option, so opt to lighten up. It's legal to... It's... Oh, excuse me. It's legal in almost 200 countries. Yeah, some of you just need to laugh more. We also have compassion. I choose compassion over criticism. Walking a mile in other people's shoes reminds me they may be going through something tougher than I think. Like their shoes are too tight or they're the kind of shoes that are too casual to be dressy or and too dressy to be casual. Basically, I have no idea what they're dealing with privately, so I'll cut them some slack and be thankful for the shoes that I've been dealt. There's a big feeling of compassion on both sides. And the commitment... I feel like it could be either or. You could either commit to this person or not. I feel like the commitment you really have to focus on is that of yourself. You commit to yourself first and foremost. So do the thing that makes you that makes you happier, that makes you laugh. Because you need a lot of that right now, pile one. But this is where I leave you. I hope this helped answer your question. If you feel like doing so, you can like, comment, and subscribe. I am sending both you, your person, and everybody involved so much love. And I will see you in the next reading. Take care. Hello, Pile 2. If you chose this lovely Garnerite green stone, then we have your reading here for you about whether or not, whether or not you and your person can be friends. This can be platonic, friendship, um, romantic for some of you, and business even. But let's go ahead and look at your connecting cards, and then we're going to do the piles A and B for you and your person. So we have changes, 10. Changes are affecting you. We also have move forward, 10 again. So we have 10, 10. Um, the number one could be an important number, but also just the number 10. Maybe that's, I'm hearing it's somebody's jersey number. We also have alchemic, which is another form of change. It's alchemy. It's shifting into something new, turning something plain into something much more wonderful. I'm hearing 25. And committed, nine. So I'm seeing, you know what's odd? These are all very blue. And then we have orange, which is an opposite color of blue on the on the wheel of colors. Um, very interesting. Whatever's going on here was meant to happen between you and this person because 
you're both going through changes and it may seem that you're drifting apart as I'm saying that my voice is cracking pretty bad. <clears throat> Uh, something about the throat chakra. There's been a lack of communication here, but you're both going through changes and it's affecting the way you see each other. But I'm seeing that you both are willing to be there for each other through thick and thin because there's a there's a very plain and simple admiration or love here for each other. So let's get cards for the both of you. So I'm intending to be person A and you're person to be person B, but you can switch that around if you want. But you could also take from parts of either pile if you see yourself within it. So person A, we have balance. Person B, we have energy. Do both of you do energy work? I feel like you're both very like intuitively guided individuals, whether you're aware of that or not. But also, this is not exactly the flower of life, but they're very similar. I feel like it might be person B going through more changes and person A is just adapting. But also opposite colors. Aren't red and green opposite colors on the on the color wheel? Somebody here might be an artist. I don't know that much about art, but I, I took enough to understand. I took enough color theory to understand opposite colors. We also have thriving for person A. Person B, we have standstill. Which is odd, very opposite energies. Whatever's going on here, you're like, it's not a mirroring. It's like whatever the person, whatever one person is doing, the other person might be doing the opposite. But yet there's, there's a change you are both going through. I feel like the changes you go through affect each other very profoundly. I'm hearing synergy, whatever that means. Um, okay, so person A, we have Otter Spirit. You're never alone. You are never alone. This is the sweetest thing. There's so much love here. Like, how can you not be friends? Is what I'm hearing. And then person B. Chameleon Spirit. Act as if. So you're both going through, through a lot of changes and it could be getting older, it could be like actual, for some of you, you might be going to different schools is what I'm hearing, whether you're in, in whether you are in university or whether you are going to college or even just different fields in education, you might decide to separate so that you can each study different things. I'm being shown the girls from Broad City right now, if you've ever watched that show. There's codependency. I'm sorry, I was taking a zip of my uh, tea. Because there have been, there's been a lack of communication here when it comes to how you both feel about this. I feel like you both have a very loving nature towards each other. Like there's definitely admiration. You care about each other. This could be a friendship that's been friends since you were 10 years old, maybe. Um, or even nine. We have a nine here. Or 14. It wouldn't surprise me if you've been friends since you were since childhood but even if you weren't friends since you were children I feel like you still give off that energy where like you've been friends forever and there's just a, an admiration here but there's changes going on and I feel like one or the both of you I feel like you both try to be there for each other but because these changes are so profound or they're pulling you in opposite directions you wonder if you can continue uh being friends and I'm hearing yes it's an absolute yes but you have to understand that you will no longer be friends on the same um in the same aspect one or the both of you could be taking on a lot more it's like when one friend becomes a, a parent you know they they become a parent and suddenly they have this child they have to put all their energy and love into and the other one is not so they just you know they play onto your uncle to this particular kid it's that kind of energy where, yes, of course you're going to be friends, but things are going to change. And I feel like it's the changes that scare you more than anything. Let's start with person B with balance, thriving, and otter spirit. Sorry, I said person B. I meant person A. Person A with the balance, thriving, and otter spirit, they are so loving toward their person B. Um, if this is a romantic connection, this is definitely the partner who is more, um, more in their feelings. They're more... Uh, emotional they're always the one who wants all the cuddles um if it's a friendship same thing they're the one who's always hyping the other person up there's a lot of nurturing within person a for anybody and everybody that they consider their friend and especially their person b it's funny that we have a giraffe here because giraffes came out in um, pile one so if you were drawn to that you could go to that but that's only if you were already drawn 
But person A is making it a point to balance out some aspect of their life or some aspect of this relationship so that they can still be there for person B. With person B, we have energy standstill and chameleon. So person B is going through an interesting energy where they have to be in either like a hermit mode or where they have to be more, more cautious than usual. I'm seeing like they're kind of being forced into something, not because they chose it, but because they they need to do this. Unless it was, like, of course, like a, a pregnancy, a child. A again, they're going to act a certain way, not because they want to, but because they have to for the sake of their baby. Whether that's um, uh, saving more money, maybe working more hours. And if they're the one having the kid, it could be because they're, um, of course, having to take care of their body in a different way. With chameleon spirit, I feel like they're trying to act as if, as if, things are still okay or as if things can go on the way that they used to i feel like person b would be the person to say that oh no we can still do that no we can still have fun we can still but the truth is you can't things are changing i mean even chameleons change as they walk um but there's a feeling here that person b is holding on to some past aspect of themselves for their own sanity it's like they don't want to change but they have to they want to um they want to keep things the same they want to keep things the same and there's a feeling here that you the both of you could lose each other somehow but i'm seeing that this is going to be i feel like this is mostly a friendship by the way guys i feel like it truly is a friendship a beautiful one but person b is afraid of the changes essentially and person a is embracing them i feel like for example, if one of them had to move away, person A would be the one who's happy that the other person has to move away because they're excited for all the things that person B is going to go through. They're excited for everything they're going to um, experience and person A would be very happy for that because they know that this friendship is strong enough that distance would not change it. Um, yeah, it's kind of like we have internet now, we have phones now, I can talk to you at any time of the day and you can get that same message pretty much close to that same time that I send it. Um, Person A is a lot more optimistic than person B. Meanwhile, person B just is kind of, especially if person B is the one that's moving away, I feel like they would be. Um, they're afraid of everything changing so quickly and so fast. I'm hearing Keens, everybody's changing and I don't feel the same. Um, yeah. So a lot of music's coming through in this, actually. I'm not even saying all of it just because some of it is uh, in other languages. But um Somebody uses kilometers here, by the way. I don't know who it is. Somebody uses kilometers when it comes to distance. But there's a feeling here that, yes, you're going to remain friends. And friends for a long time because you change together. You both move forward together as well. I feel like you both keep going with whatever it is that you're doing and you're each other's hype man. But one person has a bit more um, apprehension than the other. And the other person is just full of so much love to the point that maybe... Maybe one person here is misinterpreting it as, oh, wow, you just really don't want me in your life. And the other person's like, no, no, I'm just, I'm excited to see what things you do next. Um, yeah, person A would be the person who's happy that the other person is moving because then they can go visit them wherever they are in the world, you know, or because then they would live vicariously through that experience. It's like, send me pictures of, you know, whatever's going on over there. It's that, it's that kind of energy. Or if there's a video chat, they're going to be so excited to see how different it is, even in the space. Um, there's a lot of love here though. The commitment lets me know this connection is going to last a long time. So yes, you're going to be friends. Like it, to me, it's an absolute yes. But let's go into the tarot just in case there's something we're overlooking here. But so far I see a very strong yes from, uh, from both sides. I just think one person is a little bit more, their energy is not where, where it typically is. And that's the feeling of like, is this going to end? Is this going to change us? It's going to change everybody. But changes don't mean that you have to stop being friends. All right. So we're going to do this same style. Person A and B and then connecting cards. Starting with the connecting cards. Let's get three. And then two for each side. We have six of wands. Yeah, somebody here is moving on to better things. I never noticed that this card has a rainbow as well, which means the Six of Wands is a card of victory. So somebody here is going on to better things. Both of you are succeeding in whatever it is that you're succeeding. Um, in whatever your field is, you're going to do well. You're going to do great. And I feel like part of this is due to the fact that you know that somebody out there really supports you and it could be your person. 
Um, we have Six of Swords. Yeah, somebody is moving away. I was waiting for this card to come through. I thought this was the Six of Swords for a minute because of the water. Um, somebody is traveling over water. I'm not sure if you can tell. The, well, it could be sand. But to me, it looked like water waves when I saw that. So somebody is moving away. But it's victory. It's like a good thing that they're moving away because they get to experience new things. And the Page of Pentacles. Yeah. They're planting seeds for the... Con it's like... You know how when you garden or, or when you farm, you harvest the fruits of your labor, but then you go back and replant the seeds? It's that kind of energy where, yes, it's the end of this particular era, but we're going to keep replanting the seed of this of this love, of this connection, of this friendship. I feel like this has to be friends. Like, exes don't look at each other this way. Um, or it could be friends that, you know, maybe going in the future might end up being something. I don't know. And if it's a business partnership... Um, Travel is going to expand your business. It's going to be good for you. Okay, so let's get person A's cards. I'm only getting, getting two. We have the three of cups. Yeah, person, you know what? Person A is going to be the one throwing the go away party. They're going to throw away, sorry. They're going to be the ones throwing the go away party. They're going to be the ones throwing the baby shower if there's a baby involved. Whatever this new, this new step for the pers person B is. Person A is there for it, 100%. They're inviting everybody. They're telling everybody. They're hyping you up. And we have Seeker of Swords. There's going to be some words that are exchanged. There is going to be a conversation had. Because I feel like Person A isn't dumb. They understand and they kind of see that their friend or their person is very... Um, that they're a little nervous. That there's something going on there. And they just want to have a heartfelt conversation. It could be in front of other people. It could involve other friends as well. But I feel like there's going to be a conversation had. And then person B. We have the Seven of Cups with a lot of choices. Person B has the world open to them. And they're not even aware because they're just so focused on like how they feel. But they have a lot of choices and a lot of options. And, ooh, Knight of Cups. Uh, person B. Is there something you're not telling person A? There could be something you're not telling person A, but I feel like person B, regardless, is going to express their love for person A um, and all the admiration that is coming through. Back of the deck, we have five of coins. This is uh, not seeing something. You're both kind of overlooking some particular aspect of this friendship or this connection. Um, and it could be that A is just so happy for person B that they're overlooking like where the sadness or the sentimentality is coming into play. And person B could just be so unsure about where they're going that they're overlooking that person A is there for them a lot more than they realize. Because there's almost like somebody here is afraid of abandonment. There could be abandonment issues coming up in one or the both of you. And you both handle this particular situation very differently. I keep seeing... I want to say it was like the very last episode or one of the second to last episodes of Broad City where, um, who is Abby and Alana, like they admit somewhere in there that, yeah, we might be codependent and they're happy for each other because they're going to go on to do different things, but they're just so, they're, they're just so stuck on each other as friends, you know, it's that kind of feeling. And this could be something very similar here where, you're happy for each other because you're doing new things, but one person feels left out because they kind of thought that they would always be around. They would always be with this person or that you would do very similar life paths at the same time, you know? it's And it's not something to be ashamed of. It's not even something childish to think of. I see people at any stage in their life go through this, you know? Um, I've, on, I've honestly seen people at all ages think that they were going to do the same thing as their friends because it's kind of, uh, yeah, there is a little bit of codependency, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It can be healthy. There just has to be this talk and this understanding that the distance or the new life paths are not going to change you at all. If anything, it could bring you closer together because one person can live through the other one and the other person can help uh, remind the other person who they were before all of that, you know? Um, I kind of, I'm really loving this friendship, this connection, because it's just very honest. But right now, it's like you're in the middle of it. So yes, you will continue being friends. Let's get more cards. Um, this is going to be a clear, more of a clarifier. I'm using a different deck. The Wild Unknown Tarot. We have Judgment. Not surprised here, because there's just new important things coming through. This is a very life-changing decision, but it's already been made. We have the Seven of... Sorry, the Six of Pentacles, Reciprocity. There's going to be an equal give and take. I was waiting for another Six card to come through, by the way, because we have Six of Wands, Six of Swords, 
and six of pentacles all about reciprocity the only card that didn't come through was the um the six of cups for nostalgia which is odd because i'm kind of getting that vibe regardless again you might have been friends for a long time we also have the moon there's some oh okay person b has some secrets to reveal to person a i'm not gonna say what they are because i'm getting a very strong hint of what it is but you person b has to let person a know if you identify as person b pile uh, pile two tell your person a whatever it is that, whatever the hard conversation is tell them tell them they have to know they have to hear it and if it's person a i feel like they will come through because they have the secret the page of swords it's going to come through but person b I feel is more likely with a secret here, especially with the Conqueror and Seven of Cups. Something about uh, options and choices and what it is that they actually chose. So back of the deck, we have Hermit Energy. Um, one or the both of you may go through a time where you're not talking to each other. Understand that this does not mean that it is the end of a friendship. It just means that one person is busy with something here. And as I say that, like the sun got so bright. Understand somebody will go through a Hermit mode. They may not answer you back as much or they may just be out of the loop for a while. Um, for some of them, it might be necessary. After all, nine, the number nine in the hermit reminds me of like nine months that somebody has to carry a child. If somebody has a kid, of course, they're not going to always have time. They might be in hermit mode because they're dealing with a kid and their body and their, and their home life and whatever. But we have the sun letting me know that things will come to the light. Things will balance out with the moon and the sun. Um, but yeah, it's just a major change. And if you both embrace it with positivity and love, which I feel that you already are, things will be amazing. And what awaits on the other side is just even more love. But let's go ahead and move on to your advice. Because it's beautiful energy. It truly is. But also, I'm not sure if you can tell how like crazy the colors are going in this light right now. Like, this is an iridescent deck, but like... Oh my god. To me, rainbows signify a lot of uh, emotional fulfillment because of the tarot, like in the Ten of uh, ten of Cups. But also, just, just beautiful things are coming forward. Um, I'm going to use the Illuminator's Amulet for a yes or no type of uh, answer. I'm going to get two. One of them can answer the particular situation here. Can you still be friends? And the second one will be a question that you have that you may want answered. So just take these as they resonate. For the first question, can they still be friends? We have cast that spell. Somebody here does spell work, but what I'm seeing is like, send those good wishes, send all those good vibes out there because it, it's like, yes. I'm seeing this as a yes, essentially. And then the second question that you have on your mind, we have Attune to your needs. Remember to focus back on yourself. Remember to um, focus on you. If you're going to have a moment where you're alone or where you're not seeing anybody, it's okay to focus on you. But also this sunlight is going crazy because all I see is like rainbows in these cards. Can, can you see that? I can see that from this angle. Like, geez, I'm loving this. I'm loving the light that is coming through in this reading. It's very positive. It's very bright. And then uh, cards from the Affirmators Love and Relationship deck. Some of you are having a hard time getting a conversation started. That's okay. We have <laughs> receiving. I open up and allow myself to receive love in all ways, from all directions. It may seem scary, but it's better than receiving audits, bed bugs, or hate mail. I receive love and it feels so good that I decide to receive it some more. And then some more, and maybe just a wee bit more. Something about receiving. Also, look at this cute little letter. Like, you're going to be sending each other messages a lot about whatever is to come here. Okay, something almost came out. There's there's going to be a conversation that is going to be had between the both of you that is going to be hard to say, but it's going to have to happen. Wants and needs. I take stock of my relationships and I'm honest about what I want and need from the people in my life. I note the difference between the two. Wants are negotiable, needs are not. Both may be desired and either may be acquired, but that's getting into Venn diagram territory and no one wants to draw one of those, though some of us might need to. Yeah, like I said, attune to your needs and understand your negotiables versus your non-negotiables here. 
when it comes to whatever it is that you're receiving between this connection and also in life in general pile two you might have just needed to understand that and then back of the deck because it looks very cute loyalty i'm there for the people i care about in whatever way they need me ride to the airport no problem bail you out of jail you bet go see your band again Maybe. The point is, when I stand with them, I know I'm part of something special. And to be honest, it doesn't suck to look around and remember they're standing with me too. Yeah, there's a lot of loyalty within this connection. But this is where I leave you, my beautiful pile too. Thank you so much for letting me read for you. If you feel like uh, claiming any of this, you can do so in the comments. It's been a lot of really great positive energy. And if you feel like doing so, you can like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next reading. Take care. Hello there, Pile 3. If you uh, chose this raw emerald, then we have you reading here for you about whether or not your person can be friends. So somebody must be an Ariana Grande fan because I keep hearing one last time uh, that song. The one last time, I need to be the one who takes you home. So there's something here about seeing this person for the last time. Or I I'm not sure if it's physically or if it's like, I don't know, something about one more time is coming through. Um, with this particular person but we're going to look at your oracles and it's going to give us some indication of where this connection is these are going to be your connecting cards and then we're going to do this person a and b style with some live shuffled cards but let's start with the one that we chose the distraction of shiny things somebody here is being pulled away by something shiny and new we also have take stock of your achievements very interesting because i want to say this is like a bird but it's like a paper a paper crane and then these are like two little lovebirds here. Take stock of your achievements, the distraction of shiny new things. Is this like a love? I feel like this has to be a romantic thing where you want to be friends with your ex. But I feel like you've definitely separated. And they're being distracted by somebody or something new. And we have invasive 22. Oh, okay. I'm hearing invasive thoughts, but also somebody being invasive in either the way that they communicate or the way they want to continue being friends here or um oh this is going to be interesting energy let's go ahead and get the cards for the both of you but this is definitely about a separation is what i'm hearing um so person a i'm intending you pile three to be person a and your person to be person b but if you want to flip it you can depending on what is going on here and if you see similar things within each other it could be a sign of you mirroring just take what resonates for person some of you somebody here has a bad back or a back is hurting but whenever my back starts hurting and i'm reading cards i i immediately think of the ten of wands but we have strength for person a and the ten of wands is burdens like somebody here is busy with burdens and then we have trust on person b side something about strength and trust And then we're going to get a destiny card. Whatever this is, it's it's progressing slowly. Or there's been a slowdown of some particular thing here. Maybe it's like communication. Letting you know, yeah, it's that distraction that is coming through here. Um, take stock of your achievements makes me think that somebody here is looking back at the past and seeing what they accomplished within the time that they were with this person. So person A, we have simplicity. Person A is wanting to simplify their life for sure. And then person B, we have wonders. You're both onto better things. I can say that. You're both doing very different things as well. And then an animal card. Yeah, something about... The both of you created something together because your energies just worked really well. So it makes me wonder, like, what brought you apart? It could have been whatever this invasive energy was, the distraction of something else. Whether that was, a, like, a career or, in most cases, it's going to be another person. And for some of you, it could just be, like, new hobbies or understanding that your person couldn't go with you wherever you were going. We have koi fish. There's always enough. Person A is dealing with... Uh, with money, because whenever I think of koi fish, I think of a goldfish and gold money. But person A's energy is very, very lovely. It's like a quiet strength, simplicity, and koi. They're very peaceful. Person A is a very peaceful person. And then person B. 
they get two cards. We have Chameleon Spirit, Act As If, and Lizard Spirit, Dream the World Into Being. Very interesting. Both are lizards. I'm wondering if Person B just loves lizards in general. Maybe they own a bunch of lizards. Um, or reptiles. Yeah, that's what I meant, reptiles. I wonder if they own reptiles. But um, you're both onto better things. And here's the thing. I don't know what brought you apart. Except maybe the way you operate. But it's like a very similar energy. I've already expressed Person A's energy. But to recap, there's a quiet strength within Person A where they want to simplify their lives. They want something a lot more... Uh, more free-flowing with the koi fish. The koi fish makes me think that this person really just likes the life to flow. They like things to be easy. And if and I don't mean that they expect everything to be easy. They just like their energy to be peaceful and calm and quiet. And they just move through life like a breeze. Like they, especially if they work with manifestation or the law of attraction, they understand that if they keep good things in their lives, if they keep good vibrations, then good things will happen to them. They see life that way. Person A is that way. And then person B, with trust, I feel like the trust is mostly for person A. They trust person A. But we also have wonders. Act as if and dream the world into being. Like they too have dreams and they want to do something here. But it's almost like they trust in the universe to provide for them. And they trust their dreams will be a reality. But with act as if, it's like they're not quite there yet. They could be doing law of assumption kind of things here. Where they know if they act as if they have a lot of money, they may actually have a lot of money. But here's the problem. It doesn't always work for them. Because I can see somebody spending a lot, but then just getting themselves in the debt. Or spending a lot could bring in more money. It all depends on where they are. Because person A is affected a lot by the energy of others as to where person A is not. Person B would be the one who got distracted. Meanwhile, person A knew where to... They don't allow distractions to bother them. For example, if this is a romantic connection... Person A would be the one that if somebody was flirting with them, they might smile, but they wouldn't entertain it. Like, they'd be like, hmm, that's cute, thank you, or something. You know, they're not impressed by people trying to win them over. They know what they have, they know what they want. And at one point, it was this person. Person B, however, um, they, they if somebody flirted with them, it would make their day, and it would overinflate their ego, and they would even wonder. They would try to befriend a person that flirted with them, that they would actually have a... Um, an interest back at some point. They would keep that phone number just in case things were, don't work out with person A. Um, that's the distraction of shiny things. Somebody here could also have ADHD. Not going to be for everybody, but um, oh, I never noticed that. Um, so number 15. In this particular deck, the Sacred Creator's Oracle, it's supposed to coincide a little bit with the uh, tarot deck, the traditional right away tarot deck. And 15 is the number of the devil, letting me know that somebody here, oh, okay. Somebody here, I don't want to say they were unfaithful, but they were definitely looking around. Like, but they hid it so well. I feel like it would be person B because of this chameleon. Act as if, act as if nothing's going on. And the trust here that was placed could have been misplaced as well. Like, they, and that explains the invasive. Like, if you're wondering how somebody came out of nowhere... It's because uh, somebody let them in. Somebody let them in. I'm going to get a clarifier for this particular. Um, what would be the best deck to clarify this? Let's get another animal card. I'm hearing to get another one of these cards. Okay, good. Never mind. Uh, there is something here where somebody's... Uh, I'm hearing like... Intuitive messages being intercepted. Like somebody here understood what the situation was and they wanted to make sure that nobody saw it. Oh my god, okay. So let's get a card to clarify the distraction of shiny things as well as this invasive energy. Um, I'm being told to get one for each person. Because somebody here was not acting the way they were feeling. We have, yep, we got Tantric, which is a card of uh, SEX in this particular deck. And I'm going to have to, well, let me go ahead and get this one for this side. This is person A and then person B. 
What's going on with them? Things were simple and things were wonderful on the surface, but behind all of this, what do we have neglected? Mm. Okay, so person B has neglected. Either they were feeling neglected or they themselves were neglecting somebody here because tantric, and it's essentially a, a naked body here, which is why I have to cover it up. Um, what number is this? 11. Uh, somebody here was not being faithful and it's due to the neglect of somebody else. And how you want to see this, I don't think necessarily that it was cheating, but it could have been seen as micro cheating or it could have been seen as like flirting or just entertaining somebody's uh, advances here. If that makes sense. Like, I don't think it was full on cheating. For some of you, it probably was. But the fact that it was on person A side, I think you have to own up to whatever it was that you were seeking, pile three, if you identify with person A. And if you identify as person B with a neglected card, um, there's a sense that either you were neglecting your partner or you yourself felt neglected because of something that was going on. It's going to be very murky. Whatever went on here, a truth hasn't been, hasn't been unveiled. But it's like you both were looking for something for something more than the other person was offering. And it seemed like you guys could be friends. And I'm seeing no. I'm seeing no because somebody here is really great at hiding things. Because looking at the surface of this, it's like everything's fine. But underneath it, it's not. Wow. And I can tell somebody here was very hurt by this. And I don't blame you, Pile 3. If it's you, I think it's both of you. If it's you, it's like... Well, of course things ended up this way. Like we started as a pair, but somebody got distracted here and either neglected the other or got distracted by the potential of somebody else. I think you both played a part in this. Um, honestly, the blame is shared. I don't see one person being more in the right than the other. And I know that probably hurts to hear pile three. That's okay. I just think you have to own up to wherever you went wrong here. Um, and I'm not trying to make you feel bad about this. It's just that you both are very similar and that you um, you both wanted more from each other, but the other person couldn't give for whatever reason. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of good that came out of this connection regardless. I don't think it's anything either of you regret. Um, or at the very least, you try not to. But there was something here about a third party or... If not a third party, then the attention somebody was seeking from somebody else that came to give you a realization that this connection was just not working out or it wasn't everything that it was cut up to be. Because on the surface, it felt like everything was going fine. But then somebody, somebody uh, messed up or somebody just wasn't living up to something. Or maybe somebody was... Uh, Either somebody wasn't living up to something, there was neglect, there was a neglect of the self, neglect of others. Um, yeah, somebody was not being made to feel like the person they are to the other person. Um, but let's get some cards. The tarot is going to tell us a lot more. This is why now that I understand what that was, everything seemed fine on the surface. But then when you got underneath it, it actually got a little bit dirty. Um, it got ugly really quickly. And I feel like it took somebody some time to figure this out. Let's get your connecting cards. Um, but so far I'm seeing no. <laughs> I'm seeing no because there's unresolved issues here that maybe either of you aren't even exposing. We have the Queen of Pentacles. Somebody is taking this to the grave. And the Four of Cups. Somebody is holding on emotionally. There's emotions hurt here for sure. We also have the... Oh... This will eventually come to light. There will be a discussion, but will this discussion be um, something that actually brings it to the light? Will depend. Because somebody here is holding on to something very strongly, and somebody here is asking questions. It's almost like the sword is wanting to cut through whatever the Queen of Pentacles is holding on to. But there is going to be a discussion about this. It's going to be maybe multiple. Honestly, I feel like this could be an argument. Um, so for my person A, let's get their cards. We have Eight of Cups moving on. Person A is moving on emotionally. If they were the one who did the cheating, it's probably, well, not the cheating, but the micro cheating. Because I don't think it was a full on affair. I feel like somebody was talking to somebody. Um, but if there was any, <laughs> there was definitely emotional cheating. 
well, maybe not definitely, but there was definitely something there where it's like it could have become an affair, but it didn't because somebody here had too much love or pride for the other person. But there's emotional disconnect with the Eight of Cups. We also have the Page of the page of Pentacles. It could be you who is holding on to this, but you're not holding on to it too strongly. So you'd be willing to admit where you messed up. Um, and then we also have two more cards. We have the Six of Coins. Reciprocity. They didn't feel like they were getting their fair share of this connection. And then Eight of Swords. Where person A wasn't seeing something. They weren't seeing something. Or they were blinding themselves to it. It's like, well, let me get person B's cards. It's complicated. Let's just put it that way. And it, it. Okay, so person B, we have the world, uh, the four of wands, the hermit, and the fool. Person A, oh, sorry, person B, very strongly and divinely guided to do the things they did. Um, it's kind of like they promised the world, but then they went into hermit and fool mode. Like, because they didn't know what they were doing, even though they promised so much, they went into hiding. And the four of wands lets me know that they were the ones partying a lot. Another way of seeing this is they were seeking refuge from their family. And this is odd. I know this is odd, but I see this in relationships sometimes. Sometimes people can focus a lot on, on what their family has to say about their partner than what their partner actually is going through or has to say. That's what I'm getting from person B. Maybe they cared a little bit too much about what everybody else had to say about their connection. They were being influenced by something else, but it wasn't forward momentum. You would think it was with the world, but it's more like they were looking out for themselves or they were trying to get the world, but they were still in this fool, mo fool mode. They were at square zero or square nine, but they were trying to be over here at square 21. Like they thought this would, honestly, person B thought this would be it. But then they kept getting this, this energy of like, there's, there's something more out there or they just couldn't. Honestly, I'm seeing a little bit of uh, immaturity here with the fool, but also the hermit, because when somebody just keeps away forever in their room, that, to me, that's childish behavior sometimes. So it's like they didn't want to see something. They weren't willing to give because both the fool and the hermit are very individualistic energies here. Um, with the four of wands... Yeah, they were, there's something about giving everybody else the attention except their person. So the person A felt emotionally neglected and they were seeking something they couldn't seek from person B and somebody else. Because um, there was a lack of reciprocity here with the Six of Coins, the Eight of Swords, they weren't seeing something that person B had promised. Um, back with the deck energy, we have Queen of Cups. Who is this Queen of Cups? I feel like this is just an emotional connection for the both of them. Like they want to remain friends, but something was done here where they, I feel like one person or the other just can't forgive it because it's unforgivable. Because the Queen of Cups wanted to come out reversed, but I'm not reading, I'm not reading reversals in this particular reading. Um, it's like they want to be friends, but they can't. The friendship would be nice, but, and I feel like this is going to be part of the conversation because it's the only, it's one of the few cards that doesn't have a lot of a, uh, light on it i'm not sure if you can see but i feel like the sun is playing with me today and how um the readings are oh wow let me let me fix i'm just now realizing that the image is very um all over the place pile three i'm sorry about that but i feel like this kind of reflects whatever this is where like you thought you were seeing something but then you realize you don't and uh I hope I can edit this so hopefully when this comes out on YouTube it looks a lot better than it does right now on camera as I'm looking at it. But let's go ahead and get some uh, some clarification cards. But it's like, yeah, person A was expecting more from person B and person B couldn't deliver because they were focused on themselves. Because both, like I said, Hermit and the Fool are individualistic cards about keeping away but also starting new things it's not including somebody else here the four of wands is the wedding card though oddly enough you could have been engaged or there could have been a promise of a wedding or a marriage here let's go ahead and get three cards to see how this particular situation could go 
Um, we have the Five of Pentacles, something you're both not seeing. We have Nine of Cups, letting me know that there's still like an emotional connection here. I feel like you still both fulfill each other. I'm sorry, but the lighting is just awful today. I'm trying to like see if you can see that. Again, I apologize, uh, uh, Pile 3. Hopefully when I edit this, it'll look better. But yeah, um, there's an emotional connection here that you both really enjoy. And then we have Page of Cups. But I feel that if you were to remain friends, there's going to be a level of immaturity between the both of you because you wouldn't be able to let go of this particular situation. Back of the Ducks, uh, Five of Cups. Yeah, lots of emotions here. It's like you wouldn't be able to forgive the fact that somebody here was being unfaithful, for lack of a better word, even if it wasn't straight up cheating or an affair. Like somebody here was not honest about what they were wanting or what they were seeking. So instead they sought it out within somebody else. And and I feel like there's guilt. Yeah, somebody got distracted by somebody. And and this is where this is. But let's move on to some advice. Um because when I first saw the cards that I that came on the oracles, I wanted to say yes, you can be friends, but then I saw it deeply into it and it's like Something took some time to come through because it was a harsh truth. And though if somebody were to ask whoever it was who did the, the, the seeking out of somebody else, I guess we could put it that way, or who was being sought out, sought after by somebody else, if you were to ask them, I feel like they'd be honest, but it, it would hurt. It would still hurt. Um, for our concluding messages, let's get the affirmators. No. We're going to use the Illuminator's Amulet. This is a yes or no question. So the first card could be answering either a question you're thinking about or whether or not you can actually be friends. And then the second one will be another question that you're thinking about. So can my pile three still be friends? We have visualize your desire. I'm seeing this as a yes if you set out a good intention out there and if you're honest. Um, I do this sometimes when I want somebody to receive the news in the best way possible. I put it out there for them to be very understanding of news that I know they will not like to hear. So you could do that um, if you want. But I, I get the feeling some of you wouldn't want to just because you want to remain honest. So just do as you will. And then the second card. Put up strong boundaries. You could, I personally see this as a no, because if you have to have such strong boundaries with somebody, I don't think it's worth the energy or effort. Um, but I'm also seeing this as if you were to remain friends, it wouldn't be close friends. You would not be on speaking terms like all the time. It would just be the kind of friends that you see occasionally, you know, like at the friend gatherings or the whatever work. And then we're going to get two cards from the affirmators. Oh, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take these three since they fell onto the table. Okay, wow. Sorry about that pile three. Um, I've been having trouble with my arm lately. I uh, heard it at work, so it's part of the reason I've been dropping a lot of stuff lately. But let's start with this card. We have loyalty. I'm there for the people I care about in whatever way they need me. Ride to the airport, no problem. Bill, you out of jail? You bet. Go see your band again? Maybe. The point is, when I stand with them, I know I'm part of something special. And to be honest, it doesn't suck to look around and remember they're standing with me too. So I'm seeing here that you have to remain... Keep the people around you who have been loyal to you and who have been there for you, is what I'm hearing. We also have surrender. Hear ye, hear ye. You are hereby being called to unclench your grip on any old thought patterns that are getting in your way. Surrender any ideas that make you feel like a victim of circumstance or which make your dream relationship seem like an impossibility. The, major, the mayor of reinvention has just arrived and has made the following decree. Limiting beliefs about yourself and your life are, here, are heretofore forthwith officially and indubitably declared for the birds. There's something here about surrendering to, to love, essentially, or even giving up on a particular facade that both you and your person were agreeing to because it's gonna end up being better when you're both honest to each other we also have appreciation i appreciate the unique ways other people show their love rather than compare their ways with my ways then i appreciate myself for maturely putting up with people who just can't seem to show love the normal obvious universally accepted way 
Good job, both of us. This is for whomever felt neglected or was doing the neglect. I feel like it's for everybody, really. Um, to show an appreciation for whatever it is that people have given you. Um, because I see that this connection was something amazing, but due to something somebody did or something somebody didn't do, um, it had to end this way. But I don't really see a good friendship coming out of this. If so, it's just going to be very, very, very casual friends. Um, definitely no harsh feelings. But definitely something you both grow from. But this is where I leave you my pile three. Thank you so much for letting me read for you. Again, I apologize for the awful lighting that the sun is showing today. Typically, the lighting's pretty good. But um, if you like doing so, you can like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next reading. Take care.